Welcome to the DIY Audio Guy YouTube channel. A lot of you have been asking for a WinISD tutorial. You ask, so here it is. We're gonna get started by downloading the software. You can find the software at www.linearteam.org or you can just Google WinISD. Now I'm using a PC and I have no idea if you can use WinISD on a Mac. I'm not a Mac user. If you're a Mac user, let me know down in the comments if you can use WinISD on a Mac. All you've gotta do is click here to download the latest version on your computer. Every computer is different, so I'll let you figure that out on your own. In order to use WinISD, you're gonna to need to know the TS parameters for your particular driver. You can look that up on the manufacturer's website or it might be in the owner's manual. For this example, I'm using a Dayton Audio 12 inch subwoofer. I'll be sure to give you a link down in the description to this driver. You can find the TS parameters for this driver on the Parts Express website. Now that we've got that, we're ready to get started in WinISD. When you fire up WinISD, here's what it looks like. WinISD has a driver database, and if you're lucky, you'll find your driver in that database. I've never been that lucky. I've always had to add a new driver. After you click Add New, you get this window right here with these tabs across the top. It opens up on the General tab where you can put in the manufacturer of the driver and the model number. Now you don't have to put a lot of detailed information in here, but I use WinISD quite a bit, and for me it's really handy to have a full description in this section. So if you're gonna be a power user, go ahead and take the extra time to add all of the driver information here on this tab. Next comes the absolute worst part about using WinISD, and that's entering the driver TS parameters. It's not terribly hard, it's just kind of tedious. So take your time, go slow, and try to be as accurate as possible. The good news is that WinISD is going to do some of the work for you. These parameters are all related to each other with various mathematical formulas. And WinISD knows what they are, and if it has enough information, it's going to calculate missing values. I'll give you an example right here. Look at QTS, QMS, and QES. If you know two of those, you can calculate the third one. So enter any two of the three and WinISD will automatically calculate the third one for you. The numbers you entered will be in green. The numbers that WinISD calculate are all gonna be in blue. Next, I'm gonna enter the resonant frequency of the driver in Hertz. If you happen to know the VAS, you can enter that in this field right over here. But be careful because the default is liters. You have to change the unit of measure. I'll show you how to change the units in a little bit, so hang tight. If you don't know the VAS, WinISD will auto-calculate that after you fill in some of the other information. It's just a matter of looking things up and typing them in. You want to go slow and give the software time to do the auto-calculations before you enter the next number. You don't actually have to know anything about TS parameters to enter them into WinISD and to use WinISD. That's the beauty of WinISD. You just got to plug the information in and WinISD takes care of all the calculations for you. The key thing is to make sure you're using the correct units. Again, the default is gonna be in metric, so you've gotta change them to freedom units whenever you're using freedom units. If you wanna learn more about TS parameters, just let me know down in the comments. I'll make y'all a video. It's what I do, I make videos. Now at this point, I have the electromechanical parameters entered, and look what happens when I enter the SD. The SD is the surface area of the cone. When ISD will use this information to calculate the VAS for us. Now the next parameter is really important, it's the X-Max. The X-Max tells us how far the cone can travel without distortion. Keep watching, I'll show you why that's important. When you have the driver data entered, hit save and you're ready to move on to the next step. Now you're gonna select Create New Project. The icon looks like a sheet of paper with a yellow asterisk on it. The driver list will pop up and you can select the manufacturer and then the individual driver. Now stop right here, this part's important. When ISD will perform a driver integrity check. Green means go, red means stop. If you get the red error message that says the driver integrity check failed and your TS parameters have been entered wrong, you need to go back and fix those. If you get the green light, hit next, and you get to choose the number of drivers. Now this is important. This is not the total number of drivers you're gonna be using. This is the number of drivers per chamber. So if you're gonna have four 10-inch sealed subwoofers, each in a separate chamber, you're just gonna enter one here because they all have their own chamber. If you're gonna have two 12s in a common ported chamber, you're gonna hit two drivers because there are two drivers in the chamber. You also have the option to select a normal or a isobaric configuration. I'm gonna choose a normal configuration. 
because I'm not crazy like my friend Nick from Towards DIY Audio. Every Monday night, I join Towards DIY Audio and Robert Hi-Fi Vega for the Sound Advice live stream. We rotate the show on our various channels, so you make sure that you subscribe to all of us so you don't miss our live stream. Monday nights, 7 o'clock Central Time. Looking forward to seeing you there. I'm going to go with a ported box. If you want to learn more about the other options, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you can get a notification when I make videos on those. Next, we get to pick an alignment. Think about these as presets that have been optimized for a particular sound. Now, I'm never terribly happy with any of them, so I always just pick one at random, and then I make adjustments later to get the sound I'm looking for. The project name is important. When you save your project, it will save as that project name. Now, I'm designing this box for one of my patrons, James. Assistance with box designs is just one of the many perks that my patrons get. These people right here help me out with a financial contribution to the channel. Now, I need to give a special shout out to my two newest patrons, Angel and Brian. Thanks for joining the team. Now you hit the next button and WinISD will show you a frequency response graph. This is a mathematical prediction of how this driver is going to sound in this enclosure and how loud the driver will play at any given frequency. There's a menu at the bottom left. This is where you can make adjustments in order to shape the sound to your liking. I always start by selecting the signal menu and entering the amplifier power. The rule of thumb is to plug in 80% of your amplifier's power. That's just to get you started. You can adjust this number later to see how your driver performs at any power level that you might want to use. Now it's time to start making adjustments. Select box from the menu. This gives us the box size and the tuning frequency. By default, the box size is in liters. Just click on the little L and the box size will cycle through various units of measure. Just keep clicking until you get to one you prefer. I'm gonna go with cubic feet. Now I can adjust the enclosure size and the tuning frequency. As I do that, the frequency response starts to change. Just experiment with it until you get something that you think will sound good on the type of music you listen to. Now my patron James says that he likes dubstep, trap, and bass heavy atmospheric music. So we're going to try to go for something a little bit on the lower side. But that's going to be a problem because we're trying to fit this box into a vehicle with limited space. Hoffman's Iron Law tells us that if we want to be loud and low, we need a big enclosure. So we have to find a reasonable compromise. In order to have a frame of reference, I'm going to add the plot for a sealed enclosure. That's this blue line right there. This gives us a great visual showing us how the ported box outperforms the sealed box. Well, it's louder. I don't know what that means it outperforms it or not. It just means it's louder. Now I'm going to adjust the box design until I get something I think will work. I'm going to pay real close attention to both the peak output and the F3. That's along this dashed line right here. The F3 is the frequency where the response is 3D below flat. The F3 is important because it tells us that this is a point where the bass has started to roll off and we're going to get diminished output at frequencies below the F3. Take this point right here for example. The F3 is about 35 Hz, which is not going to give us the result we are looking for. I'm going to try a 2.5 cubic foot enclosure and a 32 Hz tuning frequency. I would like to go lower, but I know that if I do that, the vent will get longer and I have to be mindful of the total enclosure size. If you want to learn more about how the vent size relates to the enclosure size, hang around a little bit and I'll get to that in a second. The F3 is going to be under 30 Hz, probably around 27 or 28 Hz, and combined with cabin gain, hopefully that will do the trick. Next we check the cone excursion. We see here that on 500 watts, we're going to exceed our X max around 27 hertz. If we push the driver beyond its X max, it's going to become non-linear, which means you'll have a distorted output. So it might not sound good if you push it hard below 27 hertz. Now, if you push it really hard down below 27 hertz, you might exceed the mechanical limits of the driver and you're going to need an infrasonic filter. More on that in just a little bit. Now let's look at the port air velocity. If the port air velocity is too high, you'll be able to hear it. It's called chuffing. The solution is to make a bigger port opening or flare the port or both. The problem with that is that if you make the port opening bigger, the port has to get longer, meaning the port takes up more space in the box. So there is a limit to how big we can make the port opening if we're trying to fit the box into a small space. Now, I know that my maximum box width is going to be 21 inches. And when we build the box, it's going to be three quarter inch material. So I can make a port that's 19.75 inches wide. I'm going to go with 19 and three quarter inches wide and two inches high. 
Now the port velocity looks a whole lot better. Some people say it should be below 18 meters per second. Some people say it should be below 16. Now you can double that if you can flare the port in. When I do that, WinISD calculates the length of the port. So now I've got a port that's over three feet long that I've got to fold into this enclosure. Now it's time to log into Patreon, send my patron a message, ask him if he likes what I've done, and begin mocking up the box in SketchUp. If you want to see that, hit the subscribe button. To learn more about XMAX, Cone Excursion, and Infrasonic Filters, click on this video right over here. To learn more about port tuning, click on this video right down here. I'm the DIY Audio Guy, and I'll see you on the next adventure.